Well, a good and hot afternoon to you, my beloved. You know, I just figured something out as I was uh, taking out the trash. That's usually when I'm inspired, right? Well, actually, I was, to be truthful, I was telling God, you know, I don't feel like doing a message today. And it's as if the Holy Spirit told me, you know what? It's when you uh, least feel like it that maybe you need to get into my word. So grab my Bible and feed my lambs. <laughs> Yeah, hope you don't mind me calling you a lamb. We're all um, so much like sheep. <laughs> We've all gone our own way. But uh, there's uh, so many familiar passages that we're tempted to just breeze over. One of them I actually painted on the bathroom in my old home around the mirror was John uh, 15. I think I mentioned it the other day, talking about planting and uh, fruit growing and uh, this is an analogy that's so beautiful and it's uh, often overlooked. Uh, Jesus is talking of himself. He says, I am the true vine. I love it whenever Jesus specifies himself as the true, the original, the only article. And uh, so when you think of a vine, and of course in the ancient uh, mind of the Hebrews, um, a tree could be something uh, like a thick vine. And... Um, at any rate, he goes on to say um, that, he says, My father is the vine dresser, and every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. Now that's, that's pretty startling when you think about it for a minute. Um, you know, we're designed to stay connected to the true vine. And if you know anything about um, gardening or uh, if you've ever tried to grow grapes, um, it's an interesting study, really. In fact, um, I remember a book called uh, Lessons from a uh, Vine Dresser, and it talked about the, um, the art, really, of how to get the most beautiful grapes and to get the most yielding uh, from the branches for the grapes. And anyhow, I'm getting ahead of myself here. As he says, every branch that does not bear fruit is taken away, and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes well, if you're a branch, and that's what we're being called here, the analogy, just hang in there, baby. Hang in the true vine, because you are a branch. So it's okay to say I'm hanging in there. But he prunes us. Well, if you're a branch, that's an owie, because he does allow his uh, people to go through pain and suffering, to endure, and, and some people would go as far as to say you don't really understand theology and what the Bible's about until God's tested you and you've gone through some suffering. So he prunes it that they might bear more fruit. Verse 3, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are my branches. And I want to stop there for a moment again. The word abide is used a few times, and that's a beautiful word. And the word implies, it means really, um, remaining. I think that's in the NIV, and it's, some have said as a better translation. It means staying continually. Your abode, not just a place where you stay occasionally, your home, the place where you stay, is where he's, he's likening himself. As, he says, if you abide in me, and I am the true vine, Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. And apart from me, you can do nothing. Wow. Well, that's not an understatement. Apart from Jesus, you can do nothing. Nothing that'll last, that is. Nothing that'll stand the test of eternity. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch that withers. And the branches are gathered. And some commentaries go as far as to say that... Um, it's not like men gathering branches, but the angels would gather those who are not really um, true Christians, but hypocrites. Um, it's a sad statement uh, to the church. If we're a Christian and our spirit has now been joined with Christ's spirit, we shouldn't be playing uh, the role in a false religion. And there are some false religions out there. Well, I could read a little bit farther. In fact, I will. I'll just say, he says, uh, they're gathering of those withered branches and they're thrown into the fire. But if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Oh, we like that part. 
ask whatever you wish because you'll be asking according to the very will of God because his spirit is in you. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. There's that word again. If you keep my commands, you will abide in my love. What are his commands? What's the last thing that he asked you to do? Well, one of his commands is to love others the way that he's so abundantly shown his love to us. It says the Holy Spirit's shed it abroad. We should then give that love to others in the same manner without without uh, you know saying this one deserves it this one doesn't you may not like everybody but you gotta love them abide in my love if you keep my commands just as I have kept my father's commands and abide in his love these things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full boy there's a lot going on there but it, it implies walking in the spirit day by moment by moment really and there's three takeaways from that passage I just wanted to give you today. One, this thing called abiding implies a connection. Are you connected to Christ? Are you in a union with him spiritually? Have you become one with Christ? That's as easy as falling off a log if you've, if you've only just said, you know, I've tried to go life my own way and I failed. And I repent of that, Lord. I know I was designed for you for eternity and I'm trying to just go off and function in my own way and it's been a mess for the most part it's been a mess but Lord I just want to repent of that way and I want to turn 180 degrees that's what repent means and I want to follow you and I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again and that because you rose I will also rise on that final day I am in you and you are in me the second thing besides connection is um, dependence mm. every vine draws its uh, sap really they call it from the roots and this th trunk of a vine this vine tree and that's where the fruit is produced is because it draws up the sap and it bears fruit because of the connection it can't bear fruit on its own and then the third thing is a continuance I think I mentioned abiding means remaining it means staying and there's a continual staying there's one last passage and it's in John 8 and that's an awesome passage in John he talks about he is the light of the world the truth will set you free but there's a passage right here in 8 and verses 31 and 32 where he uses that same word again he says so Jesus said this to the Jews who had believed in him if you abide in my word you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And he gets into a little argument about theology with some of these um, learned scholars of the Old Testament who said, what do you mean? Abide in your word. We're all children of Abraham. Well, he insults him a little bit. He goes on to say, no, if you knew the Father, uh, you wouldn't do the things you do. You convert men and women and make them twice as wicked as yourselves. And uh, that's another lesson for another day. But he says, abide in my word. And that's the takeaway I want to give you today. I've spoken enough. But abiding in him, abiding in his word are not optional. The normal Christian life, as Watchman Nee would say, is living moment by moment in dependence of him, breathing in, just like oxygen is a perfect object lesson, what we need to rely upon to live, our next breath, Breathing out carbon dioxide, that's self, moment by moment, that's what the Christian life ought to look like. I get to preach in about a month. I think it's the Sunday after Labor Day. So um, I think I'm going to be going into this direction here of what does it mean to abide and um, to function in the way that we were intended to. Um, Christ in us, the hope of glory, it says in Colossians one of the most powerful passages I like to just meditate on. And he's helped us through another day, has he not? Um, he helped me. I was just so exhausted after work, and I said, you know what, I don't really feel like talking to anybody. And then it was like the Holy Spirit said, well, that's probably when you should talk, and you should get into my word. Abide in my word if you're my disciple. That's all I got for now. I just want to say I call you blessed, and I pray you have a wonderful, restful evening. 
until I can talk with you again, this is Bible Bill signing off.